Hurry up, join quickly. Okay, so we begin with verb, and we know that verbs are the action words. Whatever action in a sentence is done, that is called a verb. Now, here are a few examples given here. Identify the verbs in these sentences quickly. Let us mark them. It was great fun. Was I? I am an engineer. Underline and my mother drives the well. van. Underline drive. The line has the name as I have a beautiful day. Have the baby was crying all day. Was crying. Number seven. He plays football and chess. Plays. He had gone away to the suburb. Had gone. Students. Study in their examination for their examination. Study. The girls danced all night at the party. Then, the elephant is the largest animal on land. Is it was raining during our entire stay in Goa? Was raining. Rajiv's brother works in a bank. Works. Number fourteen. I love people who are kind to animals. Love and are. So these are the few verbs which we have just now picked out. Now we know that the action words are called verbs, and in that connection, they have categorized it into three categories: principal and auxiliary verbs, transitive and intransitive verbs, finite and non-finite verbs. So we move on to the next page. Now first we see the primary and auxiliary verbs. Now, basically, the primary verbs, the prime, oh, sorry, principal and auxiliary verbs. Now, principal means the main verb, the primary verb, the main aim of what a verb is to be picked for. Now, these verbs can stand alone. The only criteria they have is they can stand alone. They do not require any helping verb. <clears throat> Then they agree. With number and the person they talk of, then they express complete meaning. Whatever they stand for, they give a complete meaning. Like first, for example, he wrote a letter. Now the word "wrote" is telling you it was written. She arrived at 10 p.m. 10 a.m. Sorry. So arrived is indicating. the completeness of a verb alone so they are the main verbs basically then we talk of the other brand the auxiliary verbs now these verbs are often used with other verbs to complete their meaning that means in in themselves they cannot help like supposing see the example the dog is barking now here they need a helping verb like is the dog barking cannot make a sense so is is a helping verb and barking is working as a main verb so they have highlighted the verb with the complete meaning with a helping verb with it switch off your mic switch off your mic so here is is the helping verb and singing is the main verb or maybe supposing i will come now here will will be the helping verb come will be the main verb so auxiliary verbs are those verbs which work according to the main verb and a helping verb they they cannot stand alone so i hope the principal and the aux, uh, auxiliary verbs are understood principal means main verb which can stand alone which can express the person and sub uh, person and time <clears throat> and it uh, it agrees with person and time and expresses complete meaning now for the, the auxiliary verb they are used with the other verbs that is the helping verb and the main verb are required now further they are telling you 
that auxiliary verbs are of two kinds primary auxiliaries and modal auxiliaries now what are primary auxiliaries these are the certain words which are used as primary auxiliaries like is are do does am has have ya fir if you talk of past tense they will be was were did had etc so these are the primary words that the key words main verbs are helped by the primary verbs like if you see the example rohan is a good student now in this is is working as a main verb though it is an they is it it is a helping verb but then rohan is writing a letter now here it is acting as a helping verb and the main verb will be writing so in this connection we know that auxiliaries they are of two kinds primary that is the basic the main and the others are the modal auxiliaries and you are supposed to know these certain words you have to learn these certain words the modal auxiliaries are the words including like can must may might will would should shall ought to so these are the other word words which are telling you maybe the possibilities the obligations that means now see the example radha is late she may be sleeping so now the word may is telling you the possibility that yes she might be sleeping she is still not awake now i should wash my clothes today now it's an obligation obligation means you are supposed to do a certain thing i should do this you should complete your work that means it's an obligation you should do it then then he can drive a car now the word can is telling you the ability that yes he is good at doing this he has the ability of doing it can i shut the door now here this can again is used for taking permission he may i take your permission that should i uh, oh, shut the door can i shut the door then you should obey your parents now it's an advice so they either give advice they take permission they show the ab- ability they show the obligation they show the possibility that at times uh, talk about your habit like ranjan will always be late he's such a child that he will never come on time so these are the few things which we need to know about the first heading that we took up there are three categories let us quickly show you how i have drawn it Please see here. I have made a chart out of it, where I have shown you that action words are called verbs, and they are categorized into three headings: principal verbs and auxiliary verbs. Then next is transitive and intransitive, and the third is finite and non-finite. Now here, right now, we were dealing with this kind of words, verbs. the first category the principal or the main verb and the auxiliary verb now here i have jotted down few important things for principal verbs this first one principal verb so here they talk of the principal verbs can stand alone plus they agree with the person and number plus they express complete meaning example he wrote a letter now the moment you write wrote you understood the meaning it doesn't need he is wrote a letter he was wrote a letter no he wrote a letter means it was done something in the past and it is all in all standing clear then we talk of the auxiliary verbs the auxiliary verbs are used with other verbs please close the mic the auxiliary verbs the main criteria is they are used with other verbs they are never standing alone they need helping verbs along so in this first sentence supposing example is he is singing now is is the helping verb and singing is the main verb next example will come i will come now supposing 
I will come is the sentence. Now, will is a helping verb, and the main verb is come. Now, then further, they are told, telling us that auxiliary verbs are divided into two parts. I have dealt them: primary auxiliaries and modal auxiliaries. Now, primary auxiliaries are the basic keywords which are used as helping verbs: is, are, am, do, does, have, etc. And the past tenses of it would be was, were. And so on. Did, had, all these are the past tenses of the primary auxiliaries. Then the modal auxiliaries. Now these are the few words which express probability. They express permission, ability, possibility, determination, and these are the key words which are need to be learnt. Can, must, might, will, would, should, shall, ought to. So these are the first categories which we have dealt right now so moving further now we come on to the next category the transitive and intransitive verbs now as the words tell you transitive verbs they work in according to a object and association with that object that means any action which in which the verb will be doing in a sentence Will be dedicated to the object. Like he wrote a letter. Now this wrote. He is a subject. Wrote is the verb, and now the action done by writing. Now I am writing a letter, na. So he wrote. This action wrote is done for what? A letter. So let us read the definition. A transitive ver verb is one that is used with an object. And it could be a noun, phrase, pronoun that refers to the person or thing that is affected by the action of the verb. So now, can you see letter written? He wrote a letter. And this, he is a subject. He is, switch off your mic. He is a subject. Wrote is a verb. And now, whatever action is, it is done. This letter is will be either a noun or a phrase or a pronoun. So in this case, letter is a Noun. So he wrote a letter. So obviously, the moment we see, we will know that subject, action, and then the object which is is performing the action will be affected by the by it. That means the letter could only be written. Clear? Now see the second. He sang a. She sang a song. Now she is a subject. Sang is a verb. Now sang what? A song. So that means any object will be unnecessary, will be useless till it is not affected. Till it is the verb should refer to the object. Yeah, whatever is action is done is referred to the object in a sentence. Mother pushed the trolley. Now what is she pushing? She is pushing the trolley. So these are the transitive verbs, and they require the action and the. Uh, Action done by the verb in the form of the object will be indicated. Now, then there are certain words or, or sentences which do not require an object. They are all in all. So those are called intransitive verbs. That means they do not need an object to finish their action. They run. Now this is all in all. वो दौड़ते हैं. They run in the park. That is not necessary. Run is itself indicating the completeness. Birds fly. It rains. The artist painted. Now in these sentences, words like run, fly, painted, sleep, grow, and flew do not have any objects. Yeah, they act as all in all alone. So again, I will just take you to the example section. Here, yeah. now we did the first part, principal and auxiliary verbs. Now we come on to the second category, transitive and intransitive. Now in this we talk of the transitive verbs. They have a subject, then the verb that is the action comes, and then the object. An object could either be a noun, it could be a phrase, it could be a pronoun. Now, for example, Radha baked a cake. Now here, Radha you can see is a subject. 
Baked is the verb, that is the action done in a sentence. And what did she bake? Now the object is cake, which is a noun here. So here, any object is incomplete without the action being referred to it. So these are transitive verbs. Now intransitive verbs, the best is they do not need an object. They are all in all, they do not need an object. The baby sleeps. Now that the baby is a subject and sleeps. It's sleeping, it's all in all. We know that what is baby doing? They run. That means they is the subject and the word run is telling, indicating all in all that yes, they are running. So, this is what we have done for transitive and intransitive verbs. Let's come on to the exercises. A exercise. Open your book. Say whether the highlighted verbs are transitive or intransitive. Now for transitive, you'll write T. For intransitive, you'll write IT. I played all evening. It is intransitive. I played is all in all. I is a subject. Played is a verb, action. Now even if you just see this part of a sentence, it is all in all. I played. So it is intransitive. Next, number two, he gave the bouquet to the teacher. Transitive. They laughed at the clown. Intransitive. She swam for two hours. Intransitive. We lived in Mumbai for four years. In, intransitive. I admire him. Transitive. We clean our garden every day. Transitive. My uncle moved to another country. Transitive. My brother moved his furniture. Transitive. Just a second. Yes. <clears throat> Those people painted their fence white. Transitive. I took the local train. Transitive. The lion chased the deer. Transitive. I laughed. Intransitive. My dog barked. Intransitive. The snake slithered quickly back into his hole. Intransitive. Because you can see the snake slithered. That means it, cr it crawled around in, on the floor. So that is making complete sense even if we take away the other part of a sentence. Coming to the B exercise, underline the verbs in these sentences. State whether they are transitive or Intransitive. Now again, we'll write T for transitive and IT for intransitive. She was playing all day long. Intransitive. We showed her our kitchen garden. Transitive. Kate plays in the park, after, the park every afternoon. Intransitive. It was snowing at that time. Intransitive. She smiled at the baby, intransitive. She gave blankets to the poor, transitive. They played in the park, intransitive. I ate the mangoes, transitive. My brother doesn't drink milk, transitive. She always keeps her stationery in a zip pouch, transitive. Joy passed the ball to Paul, transitive. Maria and Rhea sang in the school concert, intransitive. The rock stars practiced regularly, intransitive. Mr. Khanna bought a car yesterday, transitive. My, sorry, the math teacher advised the students to practice daily, transitive. <clears throat> now we stop here. Please quickly put a tick mark on the exercises that you'll do. You will first come to the categories. You will put a tick mark on page one of the verb. And you'll write verbs show action, state of being and possession. You'll write this. Verbs show action, state of being and possession in your copies. This is the work I'm telling you in your copies. Then verbs can be divided into three categories. You will write one, two, three. 
After that, come to the second page. You will talk of, you will give a heading for principal and auxiliary verbs. Then you will write principal or main verb. And you will write one example. You will write these verbs can stand alone. For example, he wrote a letter. That's it. Then for auxiliary verbs, you write, these verbs are often used with other verbs to complete the meaning of a sentence. Example, the dog is barking. That's it. Then you write this. Auxiliary verbs are of two kinds, primary auxiliaries and modal auxiliaries. And then for primary auxiliaries, you will just write the examples. Is, are, am, do, does, has, have. And the past tense was, were, did, had. Then for modal auxiliaries, you will just write the name. Can, must, may, might, will, would, should, must, shall, ought to. And they determine what? They tell you about. They express probability, determination, ability, obligation, possibility, wishes, etc. Now this is what you do for auxiliaries. Then coming to transitive verbs, you will just write the definition given in this green box. A transitive verb is one that is used with an object, a noun phrase or pronoun that refers to the person or thing that is affected by the action of the verb. Okay, and then you'll give one example. He wrote a letter. Yeah, then you will talk of, you'll give intransitive verb, you write the heading intransitive verb, and you write one example, they run, and you say, the verb do not have any object. Intransitive verb, you write the definition that the verb do not have any object. And you'll give the first example, they run. Clear? Yeah? Then come to the fourth page. Now tick the first sentence that you'll do. And in this, children, make sure you do not write IT. You will write the full. Supposing I played all evening, now you'll write this sentence. After that, you will underline played and then you'll put a dash and you'll write in transitive, in transitive verb. Okay? And you'll write the whole spelling I N T R A N S I T I V E. In transitive V E R B verb. This is the full sentence, you, full word you will write in your copies. So put a tick mark on the sentence that you'll do. You'll do the first sentence. You'll do the sixth sentence. You'll do the eleventh sentence. You'll do the fifteenth sentence. So four from here. Come to B exercise. Underline the words in these sentences. State whether they are transitive or intransitive. And this also. Just do the first one and the second one. That's it. From all these above, only do the first and the second. Come to the next page. Put a tick mark on the 11th sentence. Joy passed the ball to Paul. You'll do this one. And do the, the, 18, the 12th one. Do the 11th and 12th one. That's it. We stop here for today.
ओके